subscribe to my youtube channel and click on this bell icon to get all the latest videos hello guys welcome to my channel it's been a long time since i make a video suppose you are a cs engineer or computer science engineer or you are electronic engineer suppose this kind of thing uh, people especially the students of engineering don't want to learn economics or the other side subjects of computer science or electronic subject so today i'll show you the benefits of learning economics with your engineering subject so our topic is top reasons to learn economy as an engineer or an engineering subject suppose you make a product and you don't know how to produce it more and more and how to make it perfectly and how to demand and how to supply it properly to the user and how to market this product or your particular device that you designed to engineer it and today i will talk about the combination of economics and an engineering perspective so that you get a clear idea what is economics basically is and how it can help you to market your product or hardware or software and how to use it properly and efficiently and how to handle supply demand and how to satisfy the people most so let's jump into the video so economics talks about scarcity trade-off efficiency and the best solution possible in your limited resources so i will talk about all of these four components which are really the core part of economics you need to really understand it properly to connect it with the engineering okay so let's start with the scarcity so as you know that we have unlimited want different kind of people have different kind of taste and different kind of want so the want is unlimited but we have very limited resources and we need to use those limited resources efficiently listen guys this is really important we need to use all our resources our limited resources efficiently to gain an efficient success or efficient way so that we can meet our demand properly in a limited resource so economics teaches us about the scarcity and how we can solve this scarcity it also teaches us this so our ultimate solution we get from scarcity and the next thing is trade-off so trade-off means sacrifice we cannot have all the product same time because we have a very limited resources limited money limited but we have unlimited want so we cannot have all the product at the same time we must have to sacrifice some other product to get one product uh, so our next topic is efficiency which um, economics handles this really perfectly and economics is maximizing our performance at the lowest price possible so as you can see the maximum efficiency and the maximum efficiency is also it in case of speed or suppose you want a high speed and you want it very low cost okay so then you need to consider the efficiency level or suppose you want a very high quality device but at efficient price rate that is within your limit and it will help you to you work properly and but it is efficient it is under your limitation you can buy those product within your limit and you can get the maximum performance at the lowest or lowest price possible so the cost should be in downward and the quality speed should be concerned most at lowest cost okay so this is the main purpose of efficiency which uh, economics teaches you really perfectly the next thing we have the best solution as we have already talked about the economist gives us the best solution possible in our limited resources suppose we have this pc laptop and uh, this smartphone and all of them priced at suppose 1000 us dollar all of them those pc laptop and those smartphone all are in similar price now what you wanted to buy and why suppose you need a very good good quality pc you need to edit a lot of videos and you play a lot of uh, high-end quality games and you will make a lots of apps development android apps development or any 3d graphics work and intensive work you probably buy a desktop 
or suppose you prefer laptop if you uh, use the portable things a lot and you travel a lot you will uh, select uh, those laptop are really good for portability and you can also select the smartphone if you want so it is up to you which is really best for you so economics teaches in your limitation of price and product what you should buy okay it teaches you that what should you buy and what will make you satisfied and this is the best solution for you you need to buy one because you have limited resources one thousand dollar but you cannot buy three of them at once because you have only one thousand dollar so you cannot buy three of them only one is your concern and the economics help you to choose which one is the best for you our next topic is demand economics talks about demand supply satisfaction and quantity i'll talk about it uh, in a brief so suppose demand and you made suppose you made a product or a software or a hardware or you designed a hardware or software which is really good which is really good for the people it is really helpful efficient and people are really feeling good using your product or the product you have made is a revolutionary product that people are buying this in a huge demand and the, uh, your product is in huge demand and lots of people are say, taking it from you or you are selling this at high but the problem is your your product demand is so high that you cannot produce enough and it makes your supply less so as you can see in the picture if you have high demand people are taking your product in high and you are selling it within huge margin and people are using it and fitting really well but your supply is taking down because lots of people are taking it but you cannot provide enough supply to them this is a really big problem when your demand is high your supply is low there is an inverse relationship between demand and supply so if you cannot provide enough supply to the people okay so you will not get enough profit so you need to build a more bigger laboratory more bigger resources and gather more human resources to build more supply and you need to make your laboratory more better or uh, everything you need to upgrade to produce and supply those kind of product more and more so that people get enough supply and as the demand and supply should be balanced okay so economics showed you how you can increase the supply of your product and how to meet people's demand and their satisfaction what people want and here in the picture as you can see i have drawn a uh, graph for you guys which is a graph between demand and supply because and also a price and quantity is also concerned suppose the product price is uh, suppose the product you have made or the hardware or the software you designed is really high price so people are not buying it because it is really high price okay but you can supply more because there is demand there is less demand there is high supply okay there is an inverse relationship so people are not buying it but you have enough supply so that is not good for you because people are not buying it you want people to buy your product and the if you want to increase the demand you need to decrease the price as you can see in the curve it is inverse relationship if you increase the demand the price goes down if you decrease the demand the price goes up so you need to understand all those relationship between the demand price and supply and as you can see in the right side if your supply is high your demand goes down and your demand goes high supply goes down and if your supply is high price is high so there is an uh, equal relationship between price and supply because if your price is high so people are not buying the product as much so the demand is low but the supply is high because you you have a lot of product in your stock but in demand as you can see the demand is low because the price is so high so you need to understand and balance your supply and demand and economics teach you how to balance your supply and demand and make it equilibrium okay so our next topic is for an engineer suppose you need to think about hardware the particular hardware that you created or designed you need to think about the software you need to think about the marketing and you need to 
understand how to meet the supply and how you can market market those software to people so that people buy it and they buy it so that you get much more profit from it and you need to meet the proper supply for this product or your software so that you get much more profit or the next part is meet the demand of the people and you should also concern in mind that the quantity should be enough okay the quantity should be enough so you need to build larger laboratory to product more uh, produce more quantity of your product and you know should know also the hardware part the software part and you need to know the marketing of this product you need to know this how to supply this product properly you need to know how to meet the demand of the people so all of these are really important for an engineer to learn how to market this software how to meet people's need and how to supply it and all those mechanism engineers and economics came together to understand suppose you were making the product and also publishing the product and you don't know how to uh, publish it or how to meet meet people's need or demand then you are not a proper engineer suppose you are an engineer who uh, designed a software and it is really useful for the people and people are wanting this and they get advantages and they are efficiently using the software and which is really good for them and really revolutionary software and you are producing uh, enough product to meet your supply and demand so all those things are really connected and all the things are the core part of, of economics and and particularly really important for an engineer so i recommend you to learn engineering and economics at the same time which is a really plus point for you which will give you proper knowledge uh, the engineering part will help you to create something to design something to make proper, proper hardware software and economics help you how to reach it to the people how to reach uh, and how to meet your demand how to meet the supply and how to satisfy people with your software and how to use it efficiently so all those combinations are really important which will make you a proper engineer and proper understander of your what you are doing so let's see in our last part we discuss about the main reasons why we should learn economics as an engineer so i summed up all of the uh, so i sum all of this in four chart first you need to know the market of your software how you can produce it more and more and how you can market this to the people so that people know about your software they buy it you can get profit so you the economics help you to know your marketplace the second reason is meet your demand so that you can understand what people want and you made software hardware according to people's demand so that is our second point which is really really important the third are the balancing of your software are making a software and the demand is high and the supply is low so you need to concern about the supply you need to increase the supply and make it balance and for the efficiency it is the best solution possible you should provide a software which is really efficient fast and uh, really good so that people's need you can provide proper people's need and people get satisfied using your software so all those things are combined really important as an engineer or a CS engineer or electronics engineer or whatever engineering student you are you need to understand all the core concept of economics to uh, completely understand what you made and how you can uh, provide it to the people so this will give you a proper combination of engineering so that's all it for it guys I showed you every single thing that you need to understand about economics and engineering and how you can combine it to make it better for yourself so thank you for it guys i hope you like the video and subscribe to my channel if you obviously like it and share it if it's possible obviously click the like button in the below